I drive my car up to the lake as if there's someone to awake. I haven't been to bed for days. I live in a twilight haze. And I set my heart to the setting sun and I hope Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's like a, we're in a helicopter. A little bit. <laughs> I'll just jump on here now and again. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Be the main That's cool. Host. <laughs> well, I started looking up integrated circuits last night. So I looked up Moore's Law. Moore's Law? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, holy shit. Uh, not Gary Moore from the, the old Mill of Christ but like Gordon Moore. Well, it's quite interesting. Yes. And like, Why did you, what's one, what inspired you to look that up? I just saw a, a link on. I was looking up some of your stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw um, like a, a, I saw, you know, Gordon Moore. Yeah. Moore's law from in, Intel Corp. Yeah. Or one of the co-founders, and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting, because I like looking up things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Pareto's law, or like, what is Moore's law? So I looked it up and I found it. It's about the. Um, the doubling of the information that you could get on an integrated circuit. Yeah. So then I looked up what's an integrated circuit. <laughs> so it's a bunch of organised transistors. Yeah. Or organised or integrated it yeah. into um, a pattern. Uh, yeah, so I went down a bit of a rabbit hole. It is a rabbit hole. Yeah, it's really fascinating. And then I looked up, I found a, a, a techie on YouTube who's really good at imparting information. information yeah. It's like really good, and I learned about the gateways and the transistors. Oh wow! And how they're getting smaller and smaller, and down to, well, getting down to like coming up to three nanometers wide. So it increases what? the speed yep. and the information that can be put on the chip. But <clears throat> so the way that I interpret it, so when I learned about that, the way I interpret it was like the cost of technology is coming yes. down, and then what we can do with it is going up. And so that's the whole, like, exponential kind of, like, you know, inflection point. And so all of that is... It applies to everything. It applies to... Um, and I, I just apply it to food. So that's kind of the... Food? Yeah. Oh, the the agri- agriculture. Agriculture, right? And so yep. we can't... And then putting the sustainability lens on it, you can't keep, like, yanking it out of the ground. You can't keep extracting things out of the ground and just... And it's, <laughs> it's never going to go on that... Um, exponential curve right and so but information is and so how do we continue to compete if in a world where um, product skews so the number of products in the that have been produced like created in the last seven years 50 percent of all product skews of all time so think back to clay pots so like the number of you know variety of clay pots yeah. in, in the market that kind of thing yeah to now where 50 percent of all skews of all time have been created in the last seven years and so we're on that exponential curve of product as well. So how do we, as pr- you know, producers of food, compete in the in the global markets place of? What, what do you mean by skew? Skew. So like this would be a skew, something that looks slightly different to that. This is a different skew. Oh, I like see. Product. Product. Oh, pattern. how do you spell that? S K U. Oh, it's the S K U. Oh, that's yeah. that skew. Yeah, that yeah. skew. Yeah, that's like, skew. like the product. Like I don't know what it stand for even. Um. um. Don't even know. Yeah, something. <laughs> I'm sure it has. We, we don't need to know. <laughs> so that when when I found that out, I was like, oh yeah. So if and then that's getting more and more complex for humans, right? So as humans, how do you even? We used to be like flour, meat, you know, mm. vegetables and fruit. Now we're in the supermarket. How do you make head or tail of? Oh, I know what is healthy, like either egg section or like the cheese section. You know, like how do you make head or tail of that? So that's I guess where I get really excited and passionate about. It decoding sustainability for consumers but also enabling the (coughs) primary producers to take advantage of addressing their target niche and and in doing so produce sustainability so yeah wow getting down a rabbit hole can i introduce you now (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. So, Melissa, <laughs> welcome to our podcast. This um, exciting. Now, you have a business. So, Web Tools is the overarching yeah, umbrella kind of business. Separate companies, but yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, your one's called Web Tools, though, mm-hmm. is it? No. Web Tools Agritech. Agritech, right. Yeah. And the other, there's, there's a couple of sister co- companies. Yeah. So, Web Tools Health is Health? the main one. Health? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And you, you were just saying that you founded the Agritech side of things. You co-founded. With co-founded, me. cool. And um, and it's, I'm just reading straight off the website, there it says go. Volume to Value yes. Enterprise Solutions. Yes. Right. Do you want me to explain that? Um, <laughs> yeah, you probably should. But I mean, was a little bit of it you were talking about then or not? Yeah, it's yeah, just absolutely. so complex. It is. Yeah. It is. I guess it's like, um, like wicked problems, they say. So like... Um, Across the whole supply chain, there's problems, right? Like, yeah. we have no sustainability. Um, across humanity, across the globe, yes. <laughs> there are problems. The universe, possibly. <laughs> and so, um, I'm going to go back a little bit. To, so, yeah. to, so, there's people who think really deeply into, like, um, academic sort of domains, right? Yes. And if you talk, if you look at Tim Ferriss or whatever, he talks about this this sort of like generalist. This is the time of the generalist, and I I always thought I'm not smart enough, you know, kind of thing. But actually, now I don't think I know very many people who can actually sit across the number of domains in 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 a significant enough way to make the connections. And right. so the, the time of the generalist is, is now because... The time of the generalist. Mm. <laughs> right, you're just miles ahead of me already, so don't worry so about no, just, thinking... So just take it like that. So that's for me, but then yeah. why, why are we doing this? So volume to value. So yep. in New Zealand context, yeah, we've typically been traders of commodities. Yeah, right? yeah. And in a large, largely because that's what we've had to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but now it's, we're shifting and we're realizing, right, if we sold everything we could possibly sell in New Zealand, um, we could not feed the world. <laughs> yeah. So no. what do we, what's the best option for us yeah, is, yeah, to, yeah. is to lead in terms of sustainability, quality, excellence, yep. and find the, the markets or the niches or the, consu- the discerning consumer. Yeah. But if you roll that back, actually, how to do that in a technology kind of way is, is, right. a, is a real challenge. So there's yeah. a few um, areas where um, it all breaks down. So essentially, we build solutions for the processors or the aggregators, so mm. the companies that bring in uh, product from various um, producers and, yep. then, and then sell it overseas. Ah, uh, Right. So. so when you're talking about that, like sometimes like the wool industry, for mm-hmm. example, it finds a really um, awesome new way, like all birds, sneakers, say, for example, yeah. they just totally kind of pulled one out of the bag yeah. and it was just like, this is a whole new way to look at wool yeah. and it brings new value to a kind yeah. of an old product. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's right. pro- that's productization. That's product creation. That's okay. creating value, right? And so there's a whole there's a whole bunch of ways you can do that. You can put a different box on it. Yeah. You can um, you know, put it put it slice it differently, you can, you know, combine it, you can process it differently. Mm. And then and it sort of moves up the hierarchy. So back to your com- comment about Moore's law. We'll get to a point where we can only <coughs> modify it so many ways. Yes. Sorry. Um <laughs> Moore's law, is it true that there is going to be a point where it just kind of ends and then it goes over to like a biology kind of computery cross? Oh, I think we're already there. Oh, are we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so like um, there is biology has been recreated by technology. So in, there's, I think, like Singularity University talks oh, about all that yeah. stuff so yep. i'm not really well across how much biology but yep. they have recreated yeah a lot but of it's that. moving in that direction yeah absolutely but you're sort of <laughs> saying that it does reach a certain point when what things are getting um kind of more and more sort of chopped up and small kind of or the um, information is getting yeah that's right so um Let's just take a real world example of so like Kellogg's in America, right? They had yeah. like the entire cereal industry, and they were like, "This is our target market." Oh, like I see. America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, so simple. It's great. And then, or you know, <laughs> families of, and then you can see over time it got to we need to be niche, and now you look at the cereal aisle, right? And, and there's just how many products are there? Yeah. Right. So, so does that go back to the generalization or no? Uh, the generalization. No. Um, 
Um, oh, the only talking talking about the age of the generalist is just to talk about why I'm talking about cross supply chains. Oh, I see. Kind of I see. Thing, so. Right. Okay. Um, back to Kellogg's. So, basically, the um, that so that phenomenon of of having to like get better at providing creating a value yeah. or yep. And, and I would say it a different way, producing a breakdown that actually has a solution. So right. um, people always say to me, oh, because the, the biggest concern in New Zealand is, oh, no one will pay for it. And, you know, consumers don't yeah. care about this. Yeah. And no one goes to the restaurant and says, where does my food come from? And, you know, I was like, or your, your average person doesn't. I was like, well, your average person probably doesn't. Do we want to sell to your average person is one question. Yeah. And secondly, if you had asked anyone who'd taken a taxi, um, you know, do you do you think taxis are terrible? Is it a terrible service? And they'd be like, no. <laughs> yeah. Until Uber came along, and then I thought, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, true. Yep. So, in the, in that way, and that that goes back to that kind of like the skill set of validating and understanding a problem that doesn't isn't articulated. Yeah, true. And that's the same as Ford. Yeah. Right. He wouldn't have said. No one would have said. I have a breakdown of not enough car. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. What they would have said is, I want faster horses. Yep. Yeah. I see. So there's a little bit of a disconnect between, um, well, I don't know whether it's a disconnect, it's just a, the reality of, like, between what... Do you refer to people as consumers? Um, or is that a no-no? Yeah, no, I do. Well, is yeah, no okay, cool. Consumers. <laughs> so what consumers want slash need, yeah. and perhaps what the person at the other end, the creator... Yeah. is um, trying to create and stuff. So, so I, is it I that would, kind of relationship? My theory is is that actually there's not a disconnect. And, and the reason oh, okay. why I have that is just that we are in... So go back to my experience. So I um, we were farming organically yes. in 1986 in, yep. in Canada. And then my whole life is like, make the farm, make money. I'm like, okay, yeah. how do I do that the fastest way? Yeah. And so that was a really short supply chain. There was like yeah. the farm... I created a business to do some marketing. I be essentially became an algorithm to connect my consumers to the farmers. Yeah. And, um, and I took care of the whole thing. And But because that was so short, like literally, you know, dad, daughter, and family showed up mm -hmm. and met my dad, daughter, and family. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then there was like this empathy. Yeah. Either I can have countless stories of, um, you know, and a lot of our first customers had a lot of health challenges. So... See, my dad seeing that yeah. what he's doing is making a difference yep. was just, you know, you get social outcomes, you get that yes. kind of like yeah. drive to, and then there's an accountability. So yeah. do you think he's going to put horrid toxic chemicals on it? Probably not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he knows that little Sally mm. has IBS and if yep. any trace of that gets in there, yeah. no way, right? And that sits there. And so then there was more money in the farmer's pocket so that you have economic outcomes. Yeah. And then... My dad can do the right thing for the land because yep. he's not. Um, you can't, you know, you can't be green if you're in the red. So when he's making more money, he can actually make mm. the right decision for the land. Mm -hmm. And then, as a result of that, the, the consumer knows, oh, that's the right decision. Even though mm. I, I wouldn't have thought I wanted grass-fed beef. Like no one knew what grass-fed beef was in Canada. Yeah, yeah. And so that starts to be okay. But we lose that over long supply chains. Yes, yep. And so yeah, in yeah, that yeah. way, there is a disconnect. Yeah. But what's really exciting is now technology is at a point where we can actually mm. make that connection, but we have to tell the story yeah. better yep. and more more um, full. Mm. But that creates a new breakdown, which is our brains as consumers are too full, right? Right. Yeah, so how do, you, how do you actually un like gamify it and unlock it over time and, and give them you know, something new each time because that's the world we're in. We're in Instagram world now and TikTok world. Oh, it's right? just filtering, filtering out all the garbage. Yes. But what's garbage to you is not garbage to me. No, that's right. So then it is finding the audience that it resonates with, right? Mm. So, you know, I, I wrote a book called The Unlabeled like, like 10, 15 years ago. It was like, you know, really our food should be unlabeled and because the label... Oh, wow, unbranded kind yeah, of. Yeah, yes. because the label... Sorry, go, you've got your... Oh, I was just going to say, there's a lot of crossovers between the food industry and fashion. Mm -hmm. and, and, coffee, and coffee. Oh, yep. Yeah, so we had a guy from Indigo Provisions on here and, you know, he, he sort of hand selects his garments mm -hmm. from all around the world from, you know, real reputable companies that... Um, 
have these really rich stories yep. and um, there's a lot of that traceability and information mm-hmm. there available for the end purchaser. Um, yeah, and I was just sort of seeing that, that crossover. Um, absolutely. But I can't remember what you were going to oh, say. Oh, uh, there is <laughs> absolutely. And, yeah. and what, what that, that person, yep. who's the curator, yeah. so you'll notice, yeah. um, I read a book a while back which is, sort of really just struck me, Megatrends. Yeah, and he talks about the like shortcutting trust, and how influencers, the dawn of influencers, and um, brands that actually yeah. um, do the work for you. So you're mm-hmm. you're going, I'm going to trust that person because I there's so yep. many products that you go, yeah. how in the bloody hell am I going to work through this? And yeah. so that's the shortcutting trust. Yep. And yes, I see. Now that yep. also undoes itself all yeah. the time. That's what a certificate... So uh, having been organically certified, I've seen the the, the, the ebb and like the because life cycle of it. Is that because one day it's in and the next day it's out? Or um, is it just to do with people's... Is it to do with trust? It like is. we trust something for a certain amount of time, but that trust gets eroded? Um, I think it's probably... I'll describe my experience and then we th- see what you think. But those early adopters are like the grassroots, the good intention, intention people. Yeah. And they would, come hell or high water, do mm. it that way. Because mm. the, the, the intention is pure. Mm. Then you get the sort of like yeah. the middle adopters. And once it gets that critical mass, the middle adopters are probably, they don't need to do it for the intention. They're only okay. do, they could only do it for money, popularity, Virtue yeah. signaling. Virtue signaling. <laughs> That's a thing. And, and so then what yep. that ends up happening is yep. you now have this mass collection. Yeah. And, and it is just a, yep. it is a natural like mm. <laughs> thing that happens, right? That's right. And so yeah. it's sort of like a, yep, good intention. And then I often joke because I'm, I'm a bit of a, a rogue and, you know, then, then the government gets involved and tells you what you're yeah. doing wrong about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then tries to like regulate it. And yeah. then it's actually... Actually, not interesting anymore. And then it just it's boring. A little bit, yeah. yeah. And has so then you have stripped out. You start to, yeah. It does have the soul stripped out, and it starts to create mm. the. There's this like just past the post phenomenon. So you create a minimum viable. Oh, right. And then yes. everyone just yep. goes to there. Yes. And yes. what you've done effectively yep. is cr- stopped incentivizing movement forward. Greenwashing. There is, but the reason that's kind of where it kind of yeah, comes. It in. ends up. It ends yeah. up that way because. People just go, I'll just tick yeah. all the boxes just to get to here. Yes. That's my maximum revenue for yeah. minimum effort. Yeah. And as a human being, do, yeah. you would do that, right? Yeah. And so it just, all it does is you remove the incentive to continue mm. to innovate and mm. move forward. And so that's where we actually start to have that, see the downfall. Yeah. And then we need a new one, right? Yeah. So we will continuously see these yep. cycles. And, and would you say, like going back to your book about... Um, I can't remember what it was, but I'm going to just say unbranded food. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's better. I'll do that. <laughs> would, so talk me through that. Because I do remember actually uh, in the maybe late 90s, there was a brand, um, well, there was American Apparel, and mm. that was famously oh, unbranded. Yeah, that's right. Unbranded. I forgot about that. Whatever. Um, and then I, I also remember another one, which was a bit kind of anti-establishment, a wee bit punk. And the brand was a was a dot, a black dot, which had been scribbled with a crayon. Really? And it was the, just this black dot on things. Was it? And this was this kind of like this? anti-brand <laughs> kind of punk clothing. It probably <laughs> never did very well. I don't know if it did well. But I remember I used to, growing up, we, I used to read a magazine called The Face Magazine. Mm. And a lot of English kind of music kind of style and English culture. Yeah. Um, and I remember that showing up at one point. Cool. And I thought... Gee, that's the future. <laughs> Screw all the brands. <laughs> well, um, but then people are busy and need shortcuts, yeah. so brands actually yeah. solve a problem for yeah. people, which is and they still had the black dot, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I agree. I would love to. I always joke with a lot of my clients and say, I imagine a day where it's like a very a black box with like a QR code, and right. the entire experience of that food, that farmer, yeah. that that journey of that food is in that QR code. So, do you feel like? All of our other efforts of branding and hmm. stuff like that and trying to sell stuff to people, do you feel like it kind of taints the product itself, no. kind of, or, or the experience or the, um, the longevity of it or the, the value of it? Um, I don't know if it taints it. I would say it's one way of doing it. Now, I would, yeah. I would say to brands, you've got to 
get your A into G because if you're leading, someone will chase you. Mm. And how are you mm. going to keep pace with the disruptor brands? Yeah. And so that's kind of the, the problem I solve, essentially, yeah. is getting people on that transparency ladder to then start to be able to articulate new value as we yeah. go. So back to do I think there's a disconnect between farmers? I actually, in a very <coughs> ethereal kind of like idealistic way, think the diversity of soil and the diversity of, of growing conditions and what we can do with soil and all yeah. that combined and, and the diversity of humans, which we're yeah. only now starting to recognize, yep. is actually matched. <coughs> and for yeah. every vegan that doesn't want to eat meat, there is a person that does. And for every, you know, like yeah. there will be a person. And, and that's that's the singularity thing as well, like that there's an abundance. Mm -hmm. So we, we will have no longer a scarcity. So so connecting the dots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's like. And you think that's what we want to do. Yeah, we want to connect those dots. This person wants this type of coffee bean, really yeah. obscure or whatever, yeah. and we've got it over here. We just need to... It's, it's a values connection, yeah. right? So we, I say volume to value, and so we go, we're helping yeah. enterprises volume move to from volume right. to value. Yep. But what, I, what dawned on me the other day, and, and having a conversation with a good mate of mine, it's actually values. It's like, actually, we just need to align with the people with the same values. Okay. And yeah. yep. part of that is people often don't well, more so now so we're seeing a lots of evidence um, and this is what i saw in my first years of business is that the mommy blog and so people oh, yeah. were starting to actually do the thinking before yep. the supermarket so they were actually getting informed before the supermarket mm. and now that's happening on a, a massive scale but but what's interesting is all of the supermarket research says that's not the case mm. but what we did it we did a research report and this is like i loved it because i was like you always get back oh no the customer's buying the same thing. They're not spending more on, you, you know. But then, if you look at that same customer across m multiple channels, yeah. so that one customer no longer goes just to New World. <laughs> they go oh. to, like, five different places. Right. And in North America, it's worse. Like, the millennial parent is, is actually right? shopping at five different places oh, wow. for staple goods on a weekly basis. Oh, okay. And so, and what they found about that omnichannel shopper is that they actually spend, like, 19% more on average across all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and so, their spend is actually higher because they're, yeah. they're doing the thinking before they even get to the supermarket yeah and they're obviously investing more time and Absolutely. more effort yeah. so perhaps they're thinking well i would pay more money because i've gone out of my way to Absolutely. discover this mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm guilty yeah. of it even here yeah. like we all are probably yeah i like spinach yeah. from new world because i know it comes from springston yeah um, i hate spinach yeah. in the bloody plastic packs Ugh, oh yeah it's awful yeah. yeah and it's terrible right it's not great and it, yeah. and it goes off so quickly yeah you know and so just getting it in that plastic packs looking mm, horrendous i found yeah. out recently that apparently new world takes soft plastics and turns and gives them to people to turn into fence posts oh, oh yeah well. so that so now i've got a box in my first the set. soft plastic thing so soft plastic. my wife does that as well <laughs> yeah i don't <laughs> always do it i sometimes do it. i sometimes try but you need a place to put it I've and got then it, yeah, take I've it off yeah the that's box. right and so it's, it's pretty cool because soft is. plastics i mean flipping heat and i think what's it's like interesting is like in in canada north america we can recycle all those things here, oh i see here we just no. don't have the volumes and so it's really cool that someone's <clears throat> created an enterprise it is. that yeah. can use that for fence yeah. posts yeah actually count down yeah. to it as I'm, well yeah oh, do they yeah, I remember and taking a whole bunch save. of soft yep. plastics and putting yeah, yeah, it in the yeah. bin yeah. and feeling good because you know it's going somewhere good. Well, well and it's so Kiwi that they make fence and posts. And a fence post, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the plastic perhaps doesn't have to be sort of... Because mm. I bet, I don't know, I don't actually know, but there's probably like 15 different soft plastics or 20 or something yeah. getting oh, all mixed sure. up together. But if it's all just getting mushed into a fence post, who cares, right? Yeah, that's exactly right, which is great. It'll just be like rainbow-coloured fence posts, I suppose. <laughs> They'd probably dye it to make like it like swirls, kiwi swirls or something. green oh, or yeah. grey. You, know, yeah, you, right. you wouldn't want to get rainbows in the, in the rural community. That would be... Oh, <laughs> you chuck a few out there. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's funny. Well, that's how these things get inserted, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slowly <laughs> got, It's a funny-looking fence post buried. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you like my new fence post? <laughs> what do you about Trev? <laughs> yeah. Mm, it's funny. So yeah, that's but volume to value. Go ahead. What did you mean by omni-channel? Mm. So like, is it like multiple, one channel? Multiple. Oh, multiple. So, so um, not mono, not mono channel. So yeah. like, even this was 15 years ago, or um, a lot of my customers would buy well from me, so direct from the farm. 
do a farmer's market, a supermarket, and, and then some online um, oh, I see, shopping I see. as well. So yep. that's 15 years ago. And, that's, and, and now you add in the prevalence of dietary requirements, allergies, um, you know, all kinds of those things mm. that mm. Um, it starts to become, yeah. you know, the specialty butcher <clears throat> shop has exploded in Toronto. Um, right. And so oh. you have, you're back to almost people selecting. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that here too, there's um, a sort of a, like an old school butcher shop being opened up in Dunedin. And oh, like, cool. People say, like, wow, we love that. Yeah. I want to go mm. and get my meat wrapped up in that old then, brown brown wrapper and stuff. And it's like the actual antithesis of the supermarket, which was to put yeah. it all under one roof. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's, is it more efficient? I don't know. I'm definitely, I notice myself, I will, um, I have like my online order. Mm-hmm. And then I have, so I, I've sort of systemized it because that's just how my brain works. But, you know, I, and, <laughs> I, and, I, and like I will hunt now. So I yeah. have like a freezer, Yeah. you know, but that's. It's just to make it easier, so I'm not. So I hate the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> I just hate it. Oh wow! I just like, okay. oh, I can't deal with going. <laughs> it's not my favorite I place hate either. it so much. Yeah. So yeah. I loved when online shopping came because I was like, oh, I don't have yeah. to set a foot in that place. Yeah, Plus, yeah, yeah. I like don't yeah. have to be um, gazumped by walking past something going, oh, that's nice. So mm. I end up spending less. Yeah. And getting what I need. And actually, COVID was what what transitioned me the first lockdown. Oh yeah. I was actually staying out in the middle of nowhere. And I could only go once a week to the supermarket. Yeah. Which is very opposite of the current habit. Yeah. Which is like many times a week, right? Yeah. And so I was like, this is great. I just yep. think about what I need and I... Yeah, it's yeah. It's more at once, but I spend less overall. Yeah. So that was the, the shift for me. Yeah. Far out. There's, a, there's, there's so much packed into that. And also the value and values. Oh. I was thinking about that and that distinction and how... You know, yeah, value, I don't know, we, we have, the word value has been separated from our values, hasn't it? Well, kind and of, if, yeah. if, you, if I would ask you what value is, especially in New Zealand yeah. primary sector, they'd be like, more money. Yeah. And yeah. I, the reason it, like, hit me is because um, Andrew, my friend, um, he said they get, did an exercise and this woman was hired as a consultant to go, like, figure out how to move us from volume to value. What's the, mm. what's the best way we're going to get the highest value? And he's like, she was like, make everything you have into dog food. <laughs> that will make you the most amount of money. And yeah. then for them to, them to go, oh, that's not actually what we meant. With like a stark kind of like obvious, you know, yeah. sort of like, yep. mm, we're not here it's just to do the type of thing that. I probably would have said if I was in that role. <laughs> well, exactly. Because <laughs> you My brain th- thinks kind of pretty simply, I think. What's sometimes? the highest margin thing we can do? <laughs> just put the whole bloody food. thing. And, and you have less complexity. And yeah. so you're just like, you have one, one you know, production chain and it's yeah. a simple one and yeah. your hiring is yeah. shitloads easier. But one, one extra letter with the yes, you've got values. Well, yeah. I think that's, that, that's what people yeah. actually mean. Mm. And well, that's right, but it doesn't... It doesn't come yeah. through. It's yeah. A, yeah, it doesn't yeah. compute. And, so, yeah. and I think we're in, the opportunity for New Zealand is if because we have the production systems we have and, and largely not well understood by the world mm. uh, and and lar- and I think what's really cool and this is what I get quite passionate about is being foreign maybe I just notice it more but we have I, I get excited about innovation so innovation yeah. is naturally born out of restrictions and constraint yeah and so <clears throat> you know the number eight wire we had no supply chain so we made stuff up yeah right we are the furthest away from where we sell and we yeah. have to sell to the most amount of markets yeah and adhere to the most amount of rest- regulations around food we are actually the best positioned mm. to have the most excellent food yeah. and to be the best at communicating <clears throat> values over yeah. distance. Is it happening? It's starting to, but that's, I guess, yeah. why I, I exist. Because <laughs> I, I think that's like... Sorry, Dave, you're saying? Oh, I think that's yeah, like the, the stoic philosophy where the obstacle is the way. Oh. I haven't looked into that, but it sounds like that's what it probably is. Yeah, that's like lean into it, it, right? Yeah, and lean into oh. it. I just, yeah, uh, that's but awesome. Yeah. I think yeah. it's, that's, for me, it just sits like low hanging fruit. You go, what are we naturally constrained by mm. that if we were excellent at that thing, mm. that no one else has that natural. Cons- so Israel is known to be one of the biggest agri tech yep. innovators in the world. Well, Bloody desert, yeah, and so that's right. they have to be yeah. because they don't have they don't have security of food. Yes, and so the production of food in, in various other ways, other than like yeah. the dirt, is their natural yeah. constraint. Well, what's our na- our natural constraint is not a lack of dirt. <laughs> no, no, that's right. So do you um, do you get kind of quite 
excited? Like, where do you focus your attention? Because it's really about the... You're all about the communicating, yeah. the people that are doing stuff. Because it's hard to create a, um artificial environment where people are going to be, um, like, you know, producing, like, innovation. Mm. Like, making heaps of new ideas and things like that. Yeah, because you can't kind of force those things on to people. But no. so you you're, you kind of focus more on finding those people, and I probably focus on yeah internally in my clients. I find those people who think that way. Yeah, but I also am an innovative solution mm. for organizations. So oh, true. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like, well, there's yeah, there's innovation yeah, all so across the board, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, and so there's lots of. We're, like I joke, because it's an unsexy industry. It's something most people don't even know exists and, and that is that processor space. Mm. And so we yeah. we live in, in a very, like, uh, manufacturing kind of... Oh, uh, yeah. I bet people say, if people don't know we exist, we're doing our job right. Yeah, Do they well, say that? Well, no. Uh, yes <laughs> and no. Um, but it's more just that, like, the average punter consumer doesn't even yeah. really understand the kind of the journey of food really yeah and so we live in this world that is like most people don't understand is like that that brand processor sort of aggregator hybrid right and and the problems that they yeah, solve and so it's an unsexy industry mm. <laughs> so, and then we bring innovation now um the exponential people um i don't know who wrote the book uh, exponential organizations who was one of the singularity people mm. and he talked about the fact that like as as the organism the or, the organization has an immune system and it, oh, yeah. it will like any innovation that threats threatens it yeah it will cut it out and so mm-hmm. you're like okay well how does then a giant organization innovate or continue to stay established because they will be disrupted naturally right, as the natural life cycle goes mm. and so i'm kind of like um, I don't know if it'll work, but th- their, their suggestion is to create like satellite companies that are just in a completely different ownership KPI structure, just not, yeah. you know, just invest elsewhere, mm-hmm. diversify the risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what the approach that I've taken is sort of um, making it their problem. Yeah. So I go, right, you guys have yeah. a problem, which is relevance. <laughs> and to be fair, a lot of them don't recognize that, that, mm. that there is uh, a relevancy issue. Um, Meat, for example, alternatives, the yeah. alternatives market will explode. Yeah. And, and that's the exponential technology yeah. cost kind of thing, right? Um, they're making, like, meat out of carbon mm. now. So, mm. like, literally out of air <laughs> they're yeah. going to make. So, and insane. there's billions invested in this space, yeah. right? Yeah. And so if people don't recognize that like, at some point on the supermarket shelf mm. there will be another thing of some variety that isn't yeah, yeah, meat yeah. or is of meat alternative and meat yeah. and the cost we will need to justify yeah. the increased cost of the actual meat from the yeah. the land yeah. right and and that's a truth that most people are not uh, it's a harsh truth that most people are not aware of man i mean it's like a it's like a civilization kind of almost facing yeah a downfall or something it's just like this totally well, it's a different world, Very, right? yeah. And so the yeah. options, we're going to have to become discerning consumers. Mm. And so, anyways, what I, what I was saying by that is I've taken that kind of like, I'm making it their problem. Yeah. So yeah. If, if we don't attend to the breakdown, that yeah. is, our value gets lost at export, uh, retail, at retail, at uh, secondary manufacturer, at, mm. at wherever we sell it to. Yeah. All of the brilliance that is the production systems, the story, the history, the legacy, the, mm. the effort, the regulation that we have here around our you know environment, mm. it just is literally gone. Yeah. And yeah. on top of that, if we're aggregating, if we all sell to the same company, the same Apple Packer, mm. but you do something cool and I do something slightly different, you do something slightly different, it's literally just apples by the time it gets there. That's right. It's lost. Yeah. And yep. so we don't have the ability to celebrate the diversity mm. and the mm. interesting and the you mm. know because the technology in those companies does not differentiate between your apples and my apples. Yeah, yeah. And so then we can't tell that story, and yeah. we leave margin on the table into yeah. the supply chain. Yeah, yeah. In that way, because it's complex. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, so it's turned into dog food. <laughs> it's turned yeah. into <laughs> the moral of the story. Yeah. It will be dog food. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it is, it is, yeah. then, and and yeah. not even nice dog food. It'll be no, like it'll be food. that like just you know rubbish, yeah. you know. And it of. sounds like 
You know, like the word values that can be turned into this Orwellian double speak, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Where it doesn't it means the opposite of what, what we're talking about. That's right. It, yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Orwellian double speak, great word. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> the Mil- Miltonian. Miltonian double speak. Miltonian double speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll be doing that in an hour when I'm tired. <laughs> when you're tired, like you, are yeah. not tired now. I know, uh, a, bit, a little bit washed out from the weekend. Are you? But Did you do anything interesting? Um, yeah, we went kayaking in oh. Wilton Harbour. Uh, I had a birthday party. Um, yeah, I just hung out with friends. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nothing good. too. Your birthday uh, party? Or? Yeah, yeah. Oh we had a shit! Birthday party. <laughs> Did you know? I did, oh, did? <laughs> but I didn't want to say anything because you know some people don't want to perhaps celebrate their birthday party, not celebrate it, or perhaps draw attention to oh. it. I don't know. That's a very Kiwi. Happy birthday, That's a Milton. very Kiwi thing. Mm. Be like, mm, yeah, let's true. Let's not celebrate it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Whereas if you're About in America, anything. it'd be like, oh my god, it's your yeah. birthday. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my friend. She said, "Oh, this Milton, this is the beginning of your birthday week. What are you going? What are you going to be doing? <laughs> <laughs> Month." Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, I used to do that as well until I was here seven years, and now I'm like, my birthday's coming up, and I'm like, mm, never mind. Oh <laughs> crap! You're adopting. It is weird. I, I can't believe yeah. how much I've yeah. like, you know, um, I wear a lot more black than I ever did. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> like. I have this really bright pink rain jacket, mm. and I love it so much. Yeah, but every time. I walk into anywhere. Yeah, someone. With my big hair and my gla- big glasses and a pink rain jacket, people mm. are just kind of like, "Yeah, who the bloody hell is right. that? Like, yeah. you must yeah. be someone famous or like, who mm. do you think you mm. are kind of thing. And so there's That's not a right. lot of hiding in, <laughs> in a pink jacket. Damn. And do you think, sorry, to take this away from your birthday, Milton, <laughs> 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 which we'll go back to in a minute, do you think New Zealand brands and mm. growers of food and all mm-hmm. sorts, we... I like that as well, on the world stage. Yeah, absolutely. We have this amazing product, yep. but we sort of just kind of chuck it out there and go, oh, what do you think of this? And Yeah, and I've learned recently that it kind of is a hangover. There was a time in the 90s, I think, where right. I like there was a big massive order, I think Iraq, Iran. I don't actually know. I should get my facts straight on this, but um, where someone cancelled the order and like the whole country just shut its borders to us. And we were like... <gasps> We have all this lamb. <laughs> what are we going to do? And yeah. so then we just we just tried to get rid of it at whatever price we could. Mm. And now you've got this cohort of traders living in this belief system that Still. we may have an oversupply of lamb. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And if we can get rid of all, we're yeah. doing good. Man, it's got wow. them. And we don't. And so back to the kind of like scarcity, abundance sort of thing. In a world where it's abundant, so food will be abundant, we no longer have a breakdown of satiation, so like satisfying our our hunger, right? We're going to have like cheaper alternatives. We're going to, you know, and the fact that we Instagram our food means we're like well and truly beyond, and and not the whole world, I get that, so just kind of, but we are moving that way. But in the West, it's a problem. It is, well. It's one of our main problems is having too much food and... That's right. Yeah. So... What, Eating too much. I would take the, the the approach of how do we use that, though, to our advantage. So I've, I've seen in, when we started selling organics is that the affluent and those with di- like um, kind of like excess funds or mm. discretionary funds can actually lead. So the fact that we have Whole Foods. So I didn't grow up with Whole Foods. Whole Foods is an, a, a, an event which was the organic industry won, right? The fact that, like, <clears throat> this is a main... And then Amazon bought it. <laughs> so Whole Foods is a brand, is a, yeah. Is a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a retailer, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. are... They shortcut trust for people because they, yes. they, yes. they buy right. in yeah. from trusted brands. And yeah. if you go to Whole Foods, you know you're buying the right thing. Yep. So the fact that Amazon bought it and then yeah. basically said, this is... We're staking our claim on the future that this is the type of food. So to me, that was the... The real oh, that's actually the, what happened was the affluent mm. caused the change, right? And now yeah. the cost of organic has come down, right? Yeah. Which is, yep. we were selling our soybeans into Europe for like obscene prices, four times what conventional people were doing. Yeah, and now we don't, right? No, so right, and that's the good side of regulation is it comes, right. its cost of yeah, production yeah, yeah. comes yep. down, but also the and because you get more adoption. Mm. What I was going to say about scarcity is in the in the world of abundance where we are no longer attending to a satiation yes. need, 
we have to produce scarcity. We actually have to manufacture ah. scarcity because our brains don't work. We are still survival beings. And so we actually desire things that are I scarce, see. right? And so how do we actually manufacture scarcity to to create because value is scarcity times utility. Right. So yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. useful and scarce, yep. right? Diamonds. Yeah. Gold, not not everything. really yep. useful but quite scarce. Yeah. So there's yep. like this and so we have to actually understand mm-hmm. how to produce value in that in its basic form and we have to manufacture scarcity, which brings me back to that diversity where your paddock and my paddock would be great if we could, you know, mm. just the I like I envision a time where like Timberland boots mm-hmm. will be single single origin one farm and there'll be yeah. there'll be limited runs yep. and you'll be able to yeah. get you know like yeah. high country station Timberland boots yeah 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 totally. with the whole story right yeah because I already think that's awesome how yeah exactly yeah. so how good is that for a yeah. Instagram content <laughs> <laughs> how good is that for Instagram content right yeah which is the yeah. which is yep. what we trade in that which is oh. content we trade in information what we do don't we yeah. and so I mean Shop- Shopify knows this is coming they invested in massive amounts of produ- of production cap- capability they yeah. know that the the intersection of yeah. content times e-commerce is either here or coming and so they know that we we just are not playing that game no. At all. So. Flip. Flip. <laughs> well, take coffee, for example. How much of... You know, behind this counter, you know shitloads more about the coffee than I will ever do. And then if you go back to... Well, you do, you know where it comes yeah, from. Maybe. You a know. little bit. But I'm not a massive no, geek, but, but yeah, I know You would know, know more. Bit. Yep. And then this, the guy who, bring, who imports it will know more. Yeah. And then the guy who grows it will know more. Yeah. So what yes. we've essentially seen is, is, yep. a, is a dilution of information to me. Mm-hmm. I don't get any of that story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I mean, it's yeah. all right. Do I appreciate it? I mean, it, it. I could basically get it IV'd into me because that's it's a, it's a function, right? Yeah. And and maybe an experience, and what you provide is an experience. Yeah. But I don't get the. No one's leveraging the no. story of this yeah. production. Yeah. And I don't get the story of this production. I don't come back for this. I don't get new information about it. I don't get that connection. It's lost. Yeah. So the main reason why we're not communicating this story. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Is it because, like, say, the food industry in particular hasn't... So are there industries out there that are communicating the story really well, or are there just sections of each sort of industry which are doing it well and more are going to follow? So I would say short supply chains do it well. And and because it's like, uh, I would say, like, when you go to a farmer's market, you get a lot more data points. Yeah, true. It's like you shake the rough hand, you see the the drained look, you see the (laughs) the lack of apples because it's like a shit season. There's a lot more data points that we just don't think of as data points. Yeah, I see. And you have a conversation and they tell you about something. Yeah. And, And it's new every time you go. Yeah. So that is telling the story a whole lot better. Yeah. You're invested, you you experience it, and, and that's why people like it, right? Mm. But then, and so where the question really is, how do we achieve this storytelling mm. over long supply chains with many players? Yeah. And how do we then do that where, where it's not super complex for the end consumer? Um, and I that's, think your pink jack is a good start. It is? Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't know, it's like, bam. <laughs> Well, I think it's like, so where what we've devised is uh, through the research and through 20 years of experience and whatnot is going, right, you have values, you have values, Mm. there is production mechanisms. So Mm. if we can gamify you becoming more of a conscious consumer, you know, remember BuzzFeed quizzes where you're like, I wonder what kind of a thing I am. Oh, right. And there is this like weird dopamine hit that you Mm -hmm. got. (laughs) And it's still on Facebook. They can, you know, they kind of come and go and, you know. So it's like, how do we how do we give you more information about yourself, which then yeah. gives you that kind of like, oh. Yeah. Ah. And so yeah. if we can do that, mm-hmm. and this is why I say I make it the brand's problem or I make it the processor's mm. problem, because I say, actually, if you don't provide that experience to someone, you've lost them. In a world where the, the attention span is so low, how do you actually provide mm. more than just a, a physical widget? Yeah. In that you actually have to provide them an experience. So we go, okay, well, you tell me, like, so we've codified them and we've said we've got seven categories. And under seven categories, there's subheadings. So, like, if I were to say, do you want sustainable meat? You'd be like, yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay, yeah, so course. what is sustainable to you? Um, yes, and yeah. so then I go, okay, well, um, and this is where 
brands can start to compete differently. And diversity is exciting because you could have carbon offsets of I mean, yeah. ETS. You yep. could have native carbon offsets. Mm. I want yeah. the option to buy a native carbon offset. offset. Yeah, and that yeah. will become a breakdown in that what is now <clears throat> going to be, we have now carbon neutral or carbon negative butter. But there will be a question in the consumer's yeah. mind. Every time there's a new solution, there's a new breakdown and a new solution, which is what kind of carbon neutral yeah. are you? <laughs> and where does that person put the weight? Because that's a mm-hmm. weighted kind of Absolutely. thing, isn't it? And so I call it the values. And, yeah. and, and yeah. that's what, that was my book about Unbranded. Is I basically right. took a consumer through an experience that said, yeah. what, do you, what is your algorithm that you're not yeah. actually conscious yeah. to while yeah. you go through the supermarket yeah. so that you can be aligning your purchases not to the same pathway that you took with your mother around the supermarket, but actually to your own conscious choice of how, what levers do you want to pull with your yeah. dollars yep. to affect change yeah. in, this, in the right. world, right? So is there, so then I think I'm just guessing because this is what's popping up in my head, like some of the misconceptions you're perhaps dealing with, um, with producers or whatever, mm. um, that then maybe there's an idea out there that people aren't that complex and there's this large group of people which don't kind of care or they don't sort of buy into all of that type of thing. Okay, sure, you've got, you know, would I, would... They might be thinking, I'm, I'm running the risk at going too narrow yeah. and I'm going to miss out on all these other people. So do they, do they purposefully stay wide and go, we don't want to freak anyone out and tell people about ourselves, we just want to be a nice guy? Yeah, that's, yeah. but that is literally like the like fundamental flaw of business 101, which is you tried to hit everyone and you yeah. ended up hitting no one. Yeah, And so <clears throat> that's, I think... The truth is, we can't hit the volumes that that would be, and True. and and secondly, like that's just the like, <laughs> like common flaw breakdown of businesses. Yeah, and okay. so I recently did a piece <clears throat> on like um, the twenty two immutable laws of marketing, which I think we 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 infringe upon multiple in our primary sector here, yeah. which is like there's oh, one I called see. brand uh, line extension. So we just keep yeah. taking the same brand and putting new <laughs> shit on it, you know? And it's like, no yeah. one cares. <laughs> yeah. No one, and whereas yeah. if you were to hire, like I always say, like if someone, if the primary sector wanted to really be innovative, they'd go yeah. to Lincoln, yeah. or they'd go to Massey, or they'd go to Canterbury, and they'd go, we have, we have processing capability, yeah. we have, produ- we have uh, uh, um, buying s- supply capability, we have, um, you know, uh, export capability. Mm. Make up some cool products with cool brands and a That's cool story. That's right. So they could be disruptive. They could be the disruptive ones without the complexity, right? Yeah. So if yeah. they were to get premium, they, if they were to get um, abattoir space or yeah. milk space or whatever, and were to hand pick their producers, yeah. and then be able to find their 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 niche markets yeah. in export markets and be able to tell that story better, they and and to do that. Mm. Many times over, you'd have yeah. teams of three people, which would be fuck all, yeah. <laughs> and and then you would start to actually tell that story more effectively, right? And they would own the profit and loss of that of that brand and yeah. that story, and yep. it could be cool, it could be funky, it could be. You, mm. uh, Garage Project does it well. Yeah, right. Yep. And so they create new. The craft beer industry in general mm. uh, are they killing it? Kind of are yep. they? Because uh, I mean. I mean, if you just judge them on the, a book by a cover, all of the little tins of... Although, I must say, they all begin to look like just the, the same, same yeah, yeah. I suppose. Yep. But generally speaking, when that whole craft beer thing started coming out, uh, the, the innovators of that and the, the pioneers who were pushing... Like, there's been a lot of followers, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and they've, they've paved the way. And the, did it. the yeah. industry's growing. So that's right. Yeah, <laughs> it's like how many ways can you sell hops, yeast, wheat, and, <laughs> and, yeah. and water, right? Yeah. Like the four ingredients. Oh, I think that's four ingredients. But how many ways can you slice that? And yeah. and that's their productization experts, their yeah. marketing experts, their yeah. experience experts, right? So, so I've just seen another possible thing that mm. maybe a producer might think. They might think, well, I don't want to just get. I don't want to follow this trend. This yeah. is just a trend. I haven't come up with it, and essentially, I'm just copying these people. Mm-hmm. Is there value for them in that? In what? Not uh, well, perhaps you know, um, like you said, the craft beer market is still growing. Yeah. Um, you know, is there still value in jumping on that kind of bandwagon, so to speak, and yeah. riding it? Well, um, we're probably 
in the food industry, mm. we have not even gotten to like the first 13 and a half percent of adoption, right? So we haven't even gone up that. We're, yeah. We are still an early adopter. If anyone were to like create, well, I mean, we've seen charcoal buns, right? So there is starting oh, yeah. to be that, but the primary sector hasn't done it. No. The manufacturers yeah. and the and the sort of like secondary, you know, how they combine food has started to. Okay, right. So you focus more on the primary sector. Yeah, I'm like, yep. I'm a farmer, right? Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. I am wildly yeah. passionate about going, yeah. hey, like, yeah. let's tell your story. So yeah. the, the option a farmer has is to either go direct to market, yeah. which in a larger populace close to urban centers with mm. like bigger land mass makes sense. Mm. And you can do that. And there's business models that make sense that way because then you can justify the cost of a marketer, a production manager, you know, that kind of thing. In New Zealand... We're so far away. Mm. It actually doesn't mm. make sense. Our co-op no. models do make sense. But the moment you put a co-op on top of 5,000 yeah. 5, farms, yep. you then reduce the ability to market that effectively. Yeah, I see. And yep. you've become a totally. commodity trader. Yep. And so yep. because yeah. it's quite complex, and so that's kind of where I sit, mm. is going, hey, actually, I can mm. reduce the complexity but increase mm-hmm. your ability to market more effectively and, and niche ah, and right. create more value. Yep. Mm. So your clients are... Like, like not not specific names, yeah. but just describe them in a general sort of sense. Yeah. So there. if you're aggregating raw material from the yeah. prime, from the pro, from the producer, so yeah. someone who would pull in a bunch of milk, a bunch of yeah. meat products, a bunch yeah. of wool products, a bunch of apples, a bunch yeah, of grapes, yeah. a bunch yeah. of you know um, fish. Um, yeah. And and the thing is, all of these I call them primary processors because they're the first step beyond mm. the growing or the the catching or the shearing or that whatever yeah, yeah. is that's the first place value is added because it's slightly transformed it's aggregated yeah. it's pulled it's something <clears throat> and, yeah and also a lot of these companies now in an attempt to get closer to the end consumer have created brands right and so they realize oh yeah i have to get closer to the end consumer yeah. so i must create a brand yeah and or a logo at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. So, so that's kind of the, like, the step that they've taken. Yeah. And I'm saying, let's go a little further. Yeah. So there's two ways we can get closer to the end consumer. We can either manufacture it further, mm. which that's the advent of these co-op apple packing places and the, the meat places and, you know, that kind of thing. Or, and we can also start to, to deliver more value. So we yeah. can then say to... so. The dream would be, and some people are starting, some cus- customers of mine are starting to do it, where they go, we're taking all of our farmer stories, we're packaging that up and going, mm. you're not just buying a vat of X or a pack or a pallet, you're buying the pallet plus the story, mm-hmm. and we're enabling you to tell that story. Mm. So do you know that, like, the equation of high-value good stuff? So, like, you take uh, soda water, which is a low value product, and chuck really high value raspberries in. Oh yeah, and then that's the like. Oh cool, yeah right? yeah yeah. So we can be yeah. we yeah. can be that ingredient. That's like yes. the yes. the thing that tells the story, right? Oh cool, right? Yeah. So I get that, but we don't. Mm. Do that. <laughs> and so we sit on it as yeah. a, as an ingredient on the back of the yeah. package, right? Yeah. And then no one knows, like yeah. that gets wildly lost. Yeah. And so how do we actually? How do we become the Samoan? You know. Uh, you know that Whitaker's chocolate? They do it. Yeah. Basic basic Whitaker's chocolate with a bunch of stuff thrown in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And very little bits of it. For, yeah. But you're yes. paying more for that chocolate bar for yeah. less chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite a stitch up. No. There's, <laughs> I mean, there's a whole heap of products where you take away something and you charge more. <laughs> That's exactly right. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're, and we're not yeah. sort of working with that supply chain or working yep. with those discerning brands to go, hey, yeah. use us as your, like, raspberries. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry. No, that's good. <laughs> and also, your business is What's also a raspberry smell. No, oh, the scones. Scones oh. are almost done. Yep. Three more minutes. Yeah. My What's the time? Uh, about 6.30. Oh. Um. <laughs> that's good. No. But that does go back to the whole Kiwi culture, sort of wearing black and grey <laughs> and your pink jacket thing. I think it's a great sort of little metaphor. There's some underlying oh, yeah, there like is. psychological, <laughs> cultural things. And even with those guys that lost the lamb on the mm, whatever yeah. in that deal, that's like an emotional, they're suffering from post-traumatic stress Absolutely. disorder yep. from that one experience. Yeah. 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 
So and, and like uh, my first rugby game, I think, uh, especially Crusaders, were like quite you know, especially on the one side, you get like the the one section where I love like the t- season ticket holders and the literally black puffer jackets for Africa. Oh yeah, and and like you get like your superstars <laughs> who are world renowned superstars yeah. doing wicked stuff on the field, and they're like. Mm-hmm. Like you wouldn't, they wouldn't get yeah. excited to yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't like, yeah. huh, you know. So well, you don't want to get too carried away. Because <laughs> no. like, come like on, mate. that would actually, you know, yeah. I was like, are you having fun? You should let your face know it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny. Damn. Yeah, it's but, a subtle nuance of energy in the in the um. It's like, man, Barry's really excited. And like, <laughs> would you sense it? I can sense it. <laughs> yeah, it's, like this, it's subtle. <laughs> subtle. I, I, yeah, his eye twitched. Yeah. I, uh, I, it doesn't yeah. want to be a show off. No, I, I used to get accused, probably still do, just don't know about it, um, of having American enthusiasm. Uh, um, yep. But it's actually my family. Like, we were just like outwardly joyful. Exactly. It's like a totally, but that's not really kind of. That's not a Kiwi thing. Yeah, that's, <laughs> in, that's real alien. Do we get that? Where do you reckon it comes from, Milton? Do you reckon that's our English kind of thing, or oh. is that because we're a young oh, nation? Um, is, is well, it just I always treat it's sort of pioneering bunch? spirit, and so pioneering spirit. Yeah. When the original people came over here, which wasn't a huge um, amount of time ago, no, they like you couldn't have fun. They were like just trying to busy. Trying to survive. Yeah. And Someone said so. to me, and it kind of resonates because Canada's the same, right? Yeah. Like, mm. Yeah. We yeah, were, yeah. So why do we have that quite a different sort of thing? And someone said that Kiwi, Kiwi sort of um, settlers were like second childs, um, second oh, sons. Oh, okay. And they yep. weren't given any land, so they were mm-hmm. like almost forced to come over here. And whereas in North America, it was like I'm going over there. Yeah. So right. a oh, wow. slightly different yeah. basis for which they adventured out. Yeah. And I don't yep. know if that sort of... Oh, I've never heard of that before. Mm. So one's coming out of a more um, sovereign choice. Yeah. And the other one's a bit more like a prison. Like a, you know, you're, you're, you're not good enough. Mm. And so you have to go to the bottom oh. of the world. <laughs> yeah, there's Christ. definitely that underlying... Because there is the underlining yeah. tone of like, oh, yeah. I'm not good enough. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's sort of dissipating now. But, yeah. But then there's a flip side where... It's like, well, we can do that. We can sort that out. And like, there's amazing innovation. But that's because the it's a bit of a... Can I swear here? Yeah. It's a bit of like a, fuck you, I can do it. Like, yeah. It is a chip on your shoulder, kind of like, don't oh, underestimate me. Interesting. Don't tell me I'm no good. Right, right. You know, it doesn't come from a, a, a real, like, sovereign belief. It comes from a, don't tell me I can't do something and I'll do it. You yeah. Know, if you tell me I can't do it, then I'll do yeah. it kind of thing. So, Man, so your role is... Be- <laughs> like, Why did I try to do that? Yeah. Do you do you get them? Do you have a couch in your office where you just say take, take a seat <laughs> <laughs> and then like right? Let's well, I, mean, it's, your... I, I think I didn't have to do a lot of the hard yards, but there still is hard. Yards. No, but when you meet a client for the first time, although they have found you, they've connected that dot, right? That's right. Presumably, and so and, they're looking. They're and, like, yeah. And and to be fair, like New Zealand's only so big, mm. so we are taking the. Like our brand is, yeah. we are born in New Zealand for a reason because yeah. this is where our natural constraint is. So we're excellent at telling stories over distance yeah. and, and differentiation. But the world needs it. Yeah. So the world needs that kind of like, mm. um, you know, you get you have companies all over North America trying to do this, right, and all over the EU. And you know, the the European Union is going to require a farm to fork policy that is going to require measurements mm. of environmental impact that are quite extensive to do that at scale yeah and then to communicate that so and, yeah i've just thought of another idea red little red flag if i was a person i'd say this is going to cost me heaps of money it's going to be too expensive for me to mm-hmm. do this like do you lo- do you think some of your clients are thinking that way they they kind of think uh, look it's it would be nice to do but it's going to be so there's two things um the cost of compliance will continue to get like step change more expensive. So your your co- what's happening in the primary sector is the cost of actually um, even adhering to regulation is increasing. So and the so that's one part of it. And then the other part of it is that actually the reality is um, you can't afford not to. Yeah. Because if you want to remain yeah. relevant, you will get to a point where <clears throat> you, you and this is the whole thing is you either start to invest in the foundation now. Yeah. 
and then you get on the on that ladder so you can have marginal increases over time. Yeah. Or you get to it, like it's like when you no one invested in like technology and all of a sudden then you have to do it. It's like Ooh, that's, that's yeah. a lot, right? Yeah. So yeah. that will then eventually sink you. Is if you do <clears> it later down <throat> the track where you try to retrofit <clears throat> everything, you'll <clears throat> it'll just be like. <clears throat> so yeah, I think the and where I'm reasonably crafty is like we've done a modular approach so all of our solutions are like you don't have to do the whole bloody thing just start yeah and and so we each of them so like portal farmer portal and and, you know is like the business case for that stacks Mm. up Mm. so you go here's where you're going to get savings efficiencies yeah and we just say we're going to solve a business need in the now yeah but you're also then on the on the track to transparency down the track should you actually want to invest Yeah, yeah 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 so it's sort of like Bring them on awesome. every journey. Yeah, totally. <laughs> no, that makes a lot of sense. I wish there was smell vision This is like <clears throat> quite good. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, there is actually. There's, there's a guy who's like has um, oh, has a like uh, some sort of like smell spectrometer, like can capture oh, smell. Wow. And so I was like, of course, my brain goes. There will be a time in the future where someone could buy a product and have the the smell of a spring day. Wow. Oh, hey mate, you alright? Cheers, mate. Cheers. Um, I, I, hmm, I guess it could be a bit of like a digitised smell, like digitised. That's what. That's what mm. it is. Yeah. So, like, if so, you can, like, it's so not quite real, but sort of. Oh. It'll be the the capturing of whatever makes up that smell, and then trans making it digital. Yeah, go ahead. And then what? It coming out the other end of yeah. you've got a little device on your computer or whatever that kind of sprays it out. Well, Willie, Willie Wonka invented right? that, right? Smell o vision or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Probably did. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Well, roll, roll Dow. Yeah. yeah. But this is where all the like the like oh, crazy ideas come from. I know. And, then, and yeah. then it actually becomes real. Oh, well, you know, Jules Fern and all that. From yeah. Ooh, I'm going to do three eggs. Can I do three eggs? Three eggs, yeah. Would you like a bit of hollandaise on that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> I'll do that. Yeah, Thank you. thanks so much for coming in, Melissa. This mm. is a really interesting talk, um, and it just so goes much to talk about. Yeah, there is. <laughs> it I've, goes deep. I've read some of your stuff on the Medium mm. platform and stuff, and um, yeah, it's like a. But yep. it's sort of one of those things that I can't put down. Like I tried, I've tried, but it's sort of just in me to do. So yeah, because <laughs> you had this natural predilection, like when you were very young, to, to entrepreneurship. Well, my dad, I think, is probably the one to blame for that, um, and he he was quite visionary, and my and my godfather at the time. So we were he was um, quite innovative in his own field. So he was like a soil supplement and animal supplement manufacturing companies, a naturopath, you know, kind mm. of like. Yeah. So I grew up with this innate understanding of soil, food, health, animal health, human health, just like not separate. It's yes. all actually one thing, and yeah. it's interconnected. And so I say, like, it's not something I know in my head. It's something I know in my heart. in my body and in my heart. Like, it's like a, a thing I just have as an understanding. Because I noticed you follow your intuition. Yes, I do. It's, like, pretty awesome. Like, I have intuitive thoughts, but I never follow them. Really? I actually follow them, it sounds. Yeah. Well, sometimes I do. But yeah, I mean... No, it's very powerful. I think I've probably been encouraged that way. Like, you know, my dad was putting me in business courses when I was 13 and, you know, I was doing the taxes when I was very young and, you know, that kind of thing. And you enjoyed doing the taxes? It's just like a a thing... I just understood it. I have a very mechanism kind of mechanical kind of brain where I'm like, oh, just the bits that go together, oh. and, and like I hate doing the taxes now, but mm. <laughs> but it was like a oh, so he kind of said we got to make money, and we only had a hundred acres, which is quite small, and so how do you make money on a hundred yeah. acres, right? And so you had to get quite crafty about how you do that. So we were organic soya beans, um, small grains. So we were gluten low gluten, like spelt mm. early on, and. And then my dad was certified organic early on, and but then we were still selling into this market, where like, and I it hit me one time: someone at McDonald's is ending up with my dad's meat and doesn't oh, have any whoa. idea that's how insane. good it is. That's right? I see, insane. I see, yeah. <laughs> right? That's right. Dog, and dog I was like, that's just like yeah. a criminal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's criminal. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so that's when I started the business, which was a little unbeknownst to me, a co-op supply model, because I thought, actually, we can keep the farm small, which means you have more eyes per acre and your quality is quite high. I can do this, like, matching bit, Mm. and I can Mm. handle all the logistics, which is, like, actually what we have here, right? Mm. We handle all the logistics, Mm. we take the product off there, and then we connect. Yeah. But what I did differently than what they do here is I actually 
I used at one point I had like a customer who wanted, you know, grain finished, another one who wanted corn, uh, sorry, grass finished, a one who wanted, you know, like a certain age, one who wanted um, all these things. So I ended up becoming this like spreadsheet algorithm. Mm. And I wanted chefs, the chefs wanted a certain, from a certain farm because they had mm. genetics and feeding that were combination. Someone wanted apple oh, wow. and carrot finished. And so wow. I ended up having this like wow. algorithm kind of thing, which you can't do at scale without technology, right? So no. in, yeah. a, in a weird, and but what I was able to see was I was able to pump a whole lot more money back into the rural sector. Yeah. And you know, even people who are kind of like, oh, what is a crazy chick up to? Yeah. Um, started to actually see there was results. Yeah. So that company still runs, and we're, what, 18 years on now. And oh, brilliant. So my brother's been able to expand. That's and, incredible. And then <clears throat> and then I did Dinner with the Farmer's Daughter because I thought, actually, what people are missing is this understanding. I, yeah, I saw that as well. Yeah, yep. so we did Dinner with the Farmer's Daughter. That was a crazy, like, I, I, I think I was working, like, it was insane. Do you ask me if I was a workaholic before? Like, <laughs> at that time, I was. Yeah. It was, I put a illegal commercial kitchen in and <laughs> and um, started um, doing five course meals and so yeah, and wow. then people would come around and so yeah. I'd have seatings like I think we did approximately three seatings a week uh, for about three years in the summer months so anywhere from 10 to 40 people wow. and I would cook it all and then they'd come around and I would give them a tour and so you'd have like you'd milk cows you would yeah. um, collect eggs and you'd understand why we feed the chickens, why the chickens run around, yeah. why the fences are moved, why mm. why we have the closed cow-calf operations, you know, all that. You'd see, like, the medicine cabinet or, you know, you just have a real mm. tangible experience. And um, and then they would sit and enjoy meal. And it was mm. it was the, the coolest experience. It exhausted me, but it was, like, the people, strangers, arrived yeah. from everywhere. And yeah. by the end of it, they were, you know, they break, broke bread together. And yeah, it is super cool. And they yeah. learned something and then they yeah. left as best friends. And still to this day, people will go, I still will never forget that time, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Mm, that's Man. pretty cool. So this is the, the connection. I know we've got to finish up. Oh, sorry. Um, no, that's okay. This yeah. it, instead of that, I know that boring, linear connection, sort of impersonal, it's the opposite. It's got depth. Yes. Depth mm. and joy. And colour. And love and yeah. colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To re- and celebration. Absolutely, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And yeah. so that's, yeah, that's where I was like, if I can bring mm. more depth and colour and te- yeah. texture yeah. to yeah. food that is exported, you know. And there's all these nodes of, like, linkages. Mm. Instead of this one boring, there's your food. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. Yeah. Well, it <laughs> is. It is, right? Because the, because you're, eventually you're, the people who yeah. are satisfy there's your food, will be those alternatives, will be the, the cost of those... Um, you know, synthetics will come to way down given Moore's law, and so we mm, will satisfy mm, satiation mm, for mm. a lot cheaper, which is great because we're going to, you know, re- elevate the, the world yeah, hunger yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. But at Feed the same the time, there's this if people consume food from a natural environment, we actually can drive sustainability outcomes. So, mm, mm. And yeah, that's I right. I think elevation of the individual on any level is like awesome because. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how we're going to expand. Absolutely, and, uh, that's right. Remove, uh, remove the survival, move us out yes. of survival into yeah, like into, that. into like perhaps a true security. Mm-hmm. But we have to take responsibility for that yeah, because we, we still, as human beings, operate survivally, and that means we eat all the sweet things right. because we are not taking responsibility for the f- end. We also um, don't move enough because we're not taking mm. responsibility for the fact mm. that we have a very cushy lifestyle now yeah. and yeah. our bodies need to move and eat good food. Yeah. But but we're, but because we don't Which have is to quite con- bizarre because <laughs> we almost have personally have to go back to the survival mode. We have to then, no, what we have to do is actually use a prefrontal cortex which because we're the only only species on the planet has that right. we actually have to choose that yeah which is yeah. Not, not a distinction most yeah. people get yeah you choose. have to choose the constraint and the pain yeah you have yes. to go through that yeah. like i'm gonna put my body through this like horrible yeah. exercise because i know i have to and and that kind of thing yeah but, so we can manufacture um i can't remember what that word was that we used before but um that constraint and yeah. Scarc- those scarcity or um, yeah, maybe just those hard times. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, we yeah, have yeah. to. Diamonds yeah. are not made without yeah, pressure, exactly. right? And yeah, so yeah, we yeah. have to yeah. manufacture no, that. Yeah, I've always been a bit sceptical about, like I can recognise the truth in it, that good stuff does come out of it, but um, to manufacture it, I've been a bit sceptical because mm. it sucks when you're, you know, but I suppose, you know, look, it sucks when you're exercising or when you're, you know, 
Well, doing we're moving. Stuff like that. We no longer have to do manual labor, right? Most of yeah. us don't no longer yeah. have to do manual labor. So now we have to. Exercise. But now we actually have to like think about how we move our body. Yeah. And I would argue gyms are probably not a great solution because they're kind of like junk food exercise. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah totally. But totally. yeah. So movement needs yeah. to happen. Yeah. yeah. And so that's that's the whole thing of like. Yes, we want to remove the like most of the global population out of survival, but we mm. at the same time have to we take need to responsibility make... for how they're actually moving forward. Otherwise, we're going to just create obese, malnourished people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But understanding the, the, the frontal cortex. Oh, well, yeah, that, that's pretty crucial. <laughs> what, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking of that movie uh, Wally, where remember the human race went out to space, and have you seen that the cartoon? No, I've never and then they seen they they float around on these little things, and their bones actually kind of separate. There's oh. like an X-ray of a human, and they're just this big blowy person floating around on this little spaceship, and their bones no longer join to the stuff, so they can't walk. Yeah, yeah, because like no and one the, yeah. thought about that. No, impact, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, too well, much they even see thing. like whales in captivity that don't have to like swim through water. Their yeah. fins are less are, because there's no restriction. They don't actually. Hmm. Flipping heck. Okay, yeah, we are going to have to call okay, it today because I do have to open the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> Okey doke. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so Thanks much, so Melissa. Much. It was fun. Thanks, Melissa. No problem. <laughs>